If you're a market investor right now, do you really focus on monetary policy or do you simply just worry about the trade war escalating? I think the key remains monetary policy and the, the issue is a question of numbers. Uh, so central banks right now are printing about $100 billion of extra capital per month. That's $1.2 trillion per year. They'll be doing so for about five years. Uh, trade war so far, you're talking about a tariffs import on a worst case scenario of about you know, 150 billion euro. Uh, so if you put a 10 percent, that's 15 billion euro loss. Uh, so clearly it's inconsequential. You're comparing 1.2 trillion with 15 billion. Hence, you know, it's a magnitude order 1 to 100. Uh, Elsa, do you agree with that? The concern, I guess, that there's in the market, that's underlying in the markets, is that if the trade war escalates, it could at some point tip the world economy into a recession. But at the moment, we're still very much talking about a war of words rather than actual tariffs. Um, and I think if you look at FX markets overnight, the initial response to the Trump announcement was classic risk off with the yen <clears throat> rallying and uh, uh, risky currencies selling off. And actually, the moves were very small and they quickly reversed. Um, and I think markets have kind of come to the conclusion that we've heard Donald Trump many times before threaten uh, a lot of things, you know, both with NAFTA and with Chorus. And in the end, it hasn't materialized. Within this, Elsa, is our history. Have we ever seen this before? I don't know what you mean by this, um, but I, this is a, definitely an unprecedented president. Um, we have certainly not seen this type of approach to international negotiations. It does leave um, the Chinese counterparts in a slightly difficult position of not fully being able to anticipate um, what the US president may do. I think most people agree that China has more to lose from an escalation in the trade war. Um, you just have to look at the, the size of Chinese exports to the US versus US exports to China or the relative uh, <coughs> closed nature of the U.S. economy. So behind the scenes, I would imagine Chinese officials are probably going to be less um, aggressive than they are in their public statements. Elsa, you had a storied tenure in Brussels. Is the trade war of the United States, the rhetoric of 1600 Pennsylvania, is it all plus, plus, plus for Europe and Brussels? Um, not entirely. I, I think, you know, we've heard President Trump make a few comments directed um, at German automakers, for example, and at the European Union more generally. Um, and so far, we haven't seen much in the way of rhetoric um, in recent weeks. But coming up, we do have the Treasury report on currency manipulators. It'd be very interesting to see who makes it onto that list. You know, there have been accusations um, that Germany's current account surplus is a reflection of a currency that's uh, too weak um, for its fundamentals. And it'll just be interesting to see whether um, the euro comes more into focus. We spoke to Maria Monti Davide, we spoke to also a, a former deputy finance minister of Germany, and they were actually clearly saying that Germany is going to be in the front line, in the firing line of President Trump, and maybe European countries, including Italy, should force Germany to deal with its surplus. Would that be fair? I think it's fair in a way, uh, but again, look at numbers. Look at uh, tariffs import on cars. 2.5% in the US, 10% in Europe, 25% in China. So who's the true manipulator here? So I can actually, for once, agree with some of Trump's position. Uh, you know, uh, why should they have 25% import tariffs on China and 25 in the U.S. and 10% in Europe? So I think you know, uh, the, number, the number should be equalized uh, in order to have a fair trade. Then, coming back to Europe, this question that you know, Germany needs to address its uh, trade balance, in reality, Germany needs to invest more. And the reason, because euro is a currency union, you can't say Germany has a trade surplus because it's like saying New York and California are great state. Well, what about Wyoming and, uh, you know, uh, Kansas City? Uh, uh, so clearly the level of a dollar is not set up for where California should be. Uh, it's set up on the weighted average of a nation. Uh, Europe, uh, you know, it's a monetary union, and as a result, uh, it reflects the weighted average of a monetary union. You can just pick the best area and say, well, that's where your currency should be. It makes no sense. But should Europe, so Europe in the past has also, you know, spoken up and saying we have a real problem with intellectual property theft from China. Should a European Union actually officials square with Trump in trying to get a better deal with China? Yes. Uh, as far as intellectual property, I think uh, they have to because there have been several examples of Chinese companies still intellectual property. Here in particular at Ambrosetti, uh, the key Italian SMEs a couple of years ago, they all brought up example of how their intellectual property has been stolen. So basically machine mm. has been shipped into China, uh, patent copycat, 
put a different brand, and this is clearly you know, illegal. And as a result, if China wants to play right. the adult in the room, needs to behave as an adult, can't just only talk adult, needs to behave like one too.